My name is Lorenzo Gomez. I grew up in San Antonio. I, I grew up in the inner city, come from a big family, seven kids. I'm the sixth, I'm number sixth of seven. And uh, uh, as Landon said in his intro, I used to work at HEB. I used to work at a company here called Rackspace, which I'll get into a little bit more. And uh, most recently I worked downtown in the tech scene at a place called Geekdom. And I've written a few books. Um, and so I published my third book last year, uh, which did very well number one in like five categories on amazon.com and i'm um, working on my fourth book right now and so what i wanted to do is i want to talk to you about storytelling and um the older i get the more i realize how much i love storytelling and uh, it's something that i've i think it's a gift that i've been given and i'm very grateful for it and i love sharing it i love teaching people about it because I think that storytelling is one of the greatest skills that you can get uh, that nobody tells you about and that nobody teaches. And so I'm gonna walk you through just a little presentation on storytelling. And then I'm gonna walk you through a quick, super short four part process on how to do your own storytelling so that you can go out and do storytelling even better than me. So I'm gonna share my screen here real quick and walk you through this. And I promise you this PowerPoint has eight slides. So it's, I promise to not bore you. And let me get, all right, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. All right, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna talk about storytelling. So why is storytelling important? Uh, I'm going to give you three reasons, and at the end, I'm going to give you a couple of other ones just as a bonus prize level, but these are the three main things that I want to cover. Um, everyone has a story. You might not think you do, but I guarantee you that you have a story. So everyone has a story. Your story can help someone out there in the world. And number three, storytelling is how all human beings learn and how we teach the things that we want to pass on to those that we care about. And so let's start with the first one here. So this is a picture of my first book, The Cilantro Diaries. And let's talk about this. Everybody has a story. I know that right now there's someone on this Zoom call who's thinking, yeah, but Lorenzo, you don't know me and you don't know my life. And you know, I'm a shy kid or you know, I haven't really done a lot and I don't really have anything to talk about. And I just wanna stop right there and say, you have a story. Every single one of you has a story. Uh, because I was also a very shy kid in school and I didn't like talking. I didn't like socializing. And I want to frame it to you this way. Um, if you told someone, hey, I'm shy, I get nervous around people, and you wrote it down on a blog and you posted it online, somewhere out there, someone's going to say, I deal with that too. I have that same problem. And boom, your story has connected with someone else's story. And so my first book, The Cilantro Diaries, I think is a great example of this because I wrote this book um, and one of the core settings of this book is young Lorenzo working in the produce department at HEB, which was me refilling the jalapenos and the tomatoes and the, uh, the lettuce. And I have all these stories in there about working at HEB. And so you would think, well, why would anyone want to read about a guy who works at HEB? And the reason is, is that everyone has a story. And the story that I was telling in here was about starting my career in a place that was very approachable and very relatable to other people. And so I've had so many people read the Cilantro Diaries and tell me, oh my gosh, Lorenzo, um, your story reminded me of my story. And I also used to work at HEB. Actually, Anybody here know someone's, uh, your relative or your friend that's worked at HEB? I want you to put it in the comments, a brother or sister. And I think that this is what we forget about storytelling is that it's our way to relate. Everybody has it. And no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you have a story to tell. And that's really valuable. And so let's just stop there and let that sink in. That you have a story. It's this valuable treasure that you were in charge of, and you were the one that is in control of that story. And I think that's really cool. So the second thing that I wanna tell you, and this is something that I stole from another author who I admire, his name is Max Licato, and he, he's written over 200 books. 
And he said, he, he was saying that everybody should write a book because it can help a couple of people. Well, I'm gonna change what he said and say, everybody has a story. And the more you tell your story, your story will help more people. There is someone out there in the world that needs to hear your story because your story can help them through something they're going through, through a difficult time. Oh, Pablo, thank you for that show in the book. I love it. Um, and so this is a picture of my second book, to Foya Toro. And this is about the fear and anxiety that I went through when I was in middle school. And when I went to Tafoya back in the 90s, there was a huge surge of gang violence, a lot of drive-by shootings. Um, I saw a lot of people get shot. And I was just very scared and, and afraid all the time. And so I wrote this book as a way to talk about it and to help someone else with my story. And I'll tell you, when I published the book, ever since I published this book in 2019, um, I had, I've had at least three people come up to me and, and say, because in the book, one of the things that I talk about is how I had to go to therapy and how, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to therapy because I had a lot of these issues that I had to process and I had to figure out how to deal with them. And I, I had three people tell me it was the greatest compliment they could ever give me was I read your book and I scheduled my first session with a therapist. Like your book encouraged me to go talk to a therapist to deal with my stuff. And I had another person that said, man, I was so afraid to, um, and I read your book and it reminded me of how afraid I was. And I got to talk to my son or daughter about that fear and use the book as a way where we could come together and talk about this really complicated issue. And so, you know, I want you to know that your story can help someone else. I did it in a book, doesn't have to be in a book. You know, you can story tell as we all know through YouTube and Medium and Instagram and all, all these, they're just vehicles for storytelling. But this is the second point I wanna leave you with, which is your story can help someone. Now, the second, the, the third part of this is storytelling is how human beings learn and teach. And I wanna go all the way back to the cavemen, right? So how did the cavemen pass on their knowledge they did it through storytelling, storytelling around the fires. When you go, when you study and you see the hieroglyphics of the ancient Egyptians that are on the walls of the tombs of the pyramids, what are those pictures? Those are stories. The way we pass down all of our knowledge from human being to human being is storytelling. We're the only species in the whole planet that can use storytelling to pass on knowledge and experience to one another. No other species can do that, just human beings. Um, if you look at one of my favorite examples, and this isn't an, a religious statement at all, it's just an example, but if you look at one of the most famous books in the world, it's the Bible, and Jesus taught through parables. What's a parable? A parable is a short story. He took all the things that he wanted to teach, and he put them in a little story, and he, boom, he gave it to the people that listened to him. Stories are the way to spread ideas, and that's why they're very powerful. So my third book is called The Rack We Built. And it is about my time in the very, very early days of a company called Rackspace. If anybody knows what Rackspace is, or if you know someone that works at Rackspace, or if you want to work at Rackspace, I want you to put a comment in the chat. I worked at Rackspace. I was one of the first 100 employees. It was one of the first tech companies in San Antonio. And what this book tells you is all stories. It's the stories of the beginning of the birth of the company. It's the stories of our values, how we made decisions. And all the things that we did at Rackspace were done through storytelling. We had a whole week when you got hired where they would put you in a room and they would tell you all the stories and all the values of what we did and what we had achieved to get to where we were going. And it was the number one way that our culture spread and that we built the company of Rackspace from a very tiny company to a huge, you know, $2 billion a year uh, company. It was powered by storytelling. So this uh, is a picture of a woman who has a company in California that I really admire. Her name is Nancy Duarte. And she has a company that does presentations. They're, they're the world famous, they're the world number one leader in presentations. And she is one of the, best, the greatest storytellers that I've ever studied. And so if you ever have time, I want you to go watch this TED talk. It's called The Secret Structure of Great Talks. And she dissects 
and gives you the tools, a couple of tools of what all great storytellers have. And if you look at this picture, you see the little squiggly lines. Well, part of her methodology, there's two parts, which I'm gonna go over in a little bit, is the current state of the world and then the new world. And what she's talking about is whenever you're storytelling, whoever your, your audience is, whoever it is is listening to you, it's where do you wanna take them? So if you're watching a movie, they do this to you automatically. The current state of the world is this terrible place. And then we want to get you to this other place, this other idea, this other way of thinking. It's the from, it's the to. The from and to is what all great storytellers do. And so I want to go, go through two examples that she talks about in her TED Talk. One of them is uh, very timely. So in honor of, Martin, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this week, this is a quote, and she talks about his I have a dream speech in her talk. And so you can change the world with ideas through storytelling. So I wanna read this quote from you. And in, in his I have a dream speech, Dr. Martin Luther King says, I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood, at the table of brotherhood. So what Martin Luther King does is he describes the old world. And he says, I, I have a dream that there's this new world where they'll all be able to sit together the table of brotherhood, the old world and the new world. This is what you have to do to your audience when you're storytelling, to take them from this, the world that is terrible to the new world, right? This is one of my favorite ones because I'm a tech guy. So in the same TED talk, she talks about Steve Jobs and, um, you, and how you can use storytelling to sell a million products. And so in his TED talk, when Steve Jobs rolled out the iPhone and the iPod, he said this one line right here. He said, imagine 10,000 songs in your pocket. Now, some of you might be too young for this, but in the old day, there was a cassette player and there was a CD player and then the CD player, you know, if it was an audio file, you could fit maybe 20 songs. If it was an MP3, you could fit a couple hundred, maybe a thousand, but never 10,000. MP3, yes. M MP3. And so on when Steve Jobs rolled this technology out, he said the old world was cassette, was CD, in the new world. Imagine having a device in your pocket with 10,000 songs. Ha imagine 10,000 songs in your pocket and it blew everyone's mind. And, and he used the story, a little story, to sell this product and sell this idea. And so what I wanna walk through, what I wanna walk you through next real quick is a quick method that I use when I'm doing all of my storytelling. And I want to give it to you as my gift so that if you're, if you're telling a story, you can use it if you, you don't have to use it. But the reason I want to give it to you is that there's two things that I believe every one of you are going to have to do at some point. And it has to do with selling. And when I mean selling, I don't mean going to the, the car lot and having someone sell you a brand new SUV. I mean, when you start working, and when you either start a company or go work for another company, there are two things you have to sell. You have to sell yourself and you have to sell your ideas. This is the two things that everyone has to sell, yourself and your ideas. And I would tell you that the most powerful way to sell both of those is through storytelling. The better you are at storytelling, the better you will sell yourself and your ideas. And so let me give you the little template that I use. Now, I, I, got, I went a little crazy with the graphics on here, so let me just walk you through it. There's four parts to this, to, to this storytelling method. The first is on the top here, it's called the big idea. And so if you're telling a story, you always start with what is it that we're talking about? You know, in my job, I have to talk a lot about the tech scene in San Antonio. So my big idea would, would be, I'm gonna talk about the tech scene. Actually, let's just use this uh, presentation example. I'm here to talk about storytelling. So my big idea would be storytelling. The current state of the world is, hey, you don't know that storytelling is super powerful and how much it can help you. And I wanna move you to the new bliss, the new world, which is you can use storytelling to sell products, to sell ideas and to change the world. That's how powerful storytelling is. And now I'm gonna tell you a story of how to tell the story. Sorry, I'm over mixing my metaphors here. So. What I want you to do is, I want you to write down those four parts, the big idea, the from to, and the story. 
And most of the time you are the story or you have a story or you've heard a story and the story is what you tell. But the story is what you always use to move people from the old world to the new world. And so Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech was, his big idea was, I have a dream. And he describes the currency of the world. He says, I have a dream that one day, and then he lists, and then he says, I have a dream that they will go from here to here. And I have a dream that they will go from here to here. And I will have a dream he'll go from here. And he's using that pattern and stories to move people from here to here. It's one of the most effective ways that you can tell a story. And it's what I use in all of my books. What is the idea I'm telling you about? And the reason I'm telling you about this is because we're in a place right now in the world where there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise on Twitter. There's a lot of noise on, on all the platforms, right? And I would say that the only way to effectively break through that noise is to use effective storytelling to sell yourself and to sell your ideas. All right, that's my eight, that's my eight part presentation. Now, thank you. We're going to go to Q&A, so please don't beat me up too bad. Don't worry. <laughs> so we're, mid we're middle school. Um, what can we do? Questions? Uh, go ahead and put them in the chat. Make sure you put question in front of it so that we know that you're asking the question. I like the slide where you put how to tell a story. It's like with the rocket ship. It was really nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's uh, I wanted I wanted something that said where you're taking your listener over. So I was like, if you're riding a rocket, I'm taking you from here, the old world, to the new world. I like the MLK um, quote that you used. Mm -hmm. I love the I love the rich rich American history that comes with that, and uh, that comes with what happened what had happened years ago yesterday. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, I think we have some uh, questions here. All right. Um, the first one is, what would you stress the most about school? Um, well, my question to that question is, what would I stress about or what would I stress to you to learn? What what? Can I get a, just a little clarification? What always just stressed you out the most? What would stress me out the most? Oh, well, I would say um, when I was going to school, what stressed me out the most was my report card because my, my parents had very strict A's and B's policy. And if I didn't get A's and B's, oh man, I was in so much trouble. Now, what I will tell you that if I was going to school today, the thing that would stress me out the most is this right here, my phone. And I'll tell you why. I, and, and there's a book I'm gonna write about this, I just haven't got around to writing it yet. Is that when I was in school, if someone was bullying me, I didn't have a phone, uh, I didn't have a computer, I would just go home and then I'd have to deal with it anymore. Where is it disappear? It would melt away. It would melt away. Whereas now, if I went to school and someone was bullying me, I take it home with me, literally into my room. And I think that the reason that that would stress me out was because I wouldn't have known what boundaries to put in place. And I think that, especially in the time that you all live in, we need to learn what the boundaries are for this phone right here, so that how do we protect ourselves and protect our friends? from these outside forces that cause a lot of stress. And when I look at um, the really hard job you all have to do, I'm so uh, impressed by how many of you have do a good job already of it. But that would be the thing that stressed me out because I would wanna look at it all the time and, I would, and I, would, I would read every comment and it would make me, and I would start hyperventilating. And that would be the thing that stressed me out. Whereas I, I would have to have someone teach me the boundaries I have so that I could get some space from it. That's a great question though. All right, what's our next question? Uh, when did you start to know you wanted to write books to tell your stories? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. When did I wanna know I wanna write books? Well, um, I didn't know this, but growing up I realized 
that my parents are amazing storytellers. And when my parents tell stories, I just stop what I'm doing. And my older brother, he's a great storyteller. So I realized I come from a family of storytellers, but I didn't know that. When I started working at Rackspace, I remember in the early days, we were working so many hours and we would stay up there so late that we would all tell stories. But I noticed that people would like my stories a lot. And I remember one of my friends would tell me, hey, Lorenzo, tell them some of your cilantro stories. He would call them the cilantro stories. And I would tell them the stories that I ended up writing in the cilantro diaries. And I, and I ended up realizing that, man, I love storytelling. It's really fun for me. And so that was the seed of an idea back when I was probably, you know, um, 18, 19, uh, but in my early 20s is when I really started thinking about it. And then it wasn't until a lot in, uh, gosh, uh, my late 20s when I actually said, uh, I, you know, I need to look into this. And then I didn't write it till my late 30s. So I've been thinking about storytelling for a long time. And I'm glad you asked that question because I would say that um, you don't have to be an author to, to be a storyteller. You can be a storyteller in whatever world that you live in. Um, and you don't have to wait as long as I did to do it. I was just, I had a lot of uh, insecurity and I was afraid a lot and I should have done it a lot sooner than I did. But it was probably in my, in my uh, late teens. Great question. All right, next question is, how did you become a writer? Any advice for people who are interested in pursuing a career in writing? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> writing's a hard gig, uh, but if you're, if you're interested in doing writing, I would say the first thing you need to do is practice, right? I think that if you study storytelling, it makes writing a lot easier because it's easy to write a story. You just, you know, you, for me, I always have a good playlist going. And once I have the, the format, I'm just writing what the story is that, that I've seen in my head. But, but I think that one of the things that, um, that nobody talks about is I never write by myself. I, I write by myself but when I'm going to publish something, I always work with someone else. And specifically, there's a woman that I've worked with one, on all of my books. Her name is Barbara Boyd, and she's my editor. And, and the reason I bring her up is I want you to know that it takes a team to do anything great. And so when I write, I give this to her. And it's really hard because you're very vulnerable. You've put all your heart into this. And so you feel wide open. Your heart's wide open to be crushed. And Barbara is the woman who tells me, she's my collaborator. And she says, Lorenzo, I love this story. I think we need to change this one. I think on this one, you're going to lose your reader. And, and, I, and I need you to explain this one more. And because of her counsel and advice, and because she's so good, um, I, I value her ideas. And so I take all of her edits and I put them in the book. And it's, I think it's the reason my books uh, read so well, uh, or people have told me they read well is because she makes sure that um, I'm on track and that I don't go off track for the reader. And so I would say for all of you that are thinking about writing, find yourself someone who you could be intellectually honest with. The person that's gonna make fun of you, that's not them. The person that's gonna try to hurt your feelings and, and assassinate your self-esteem, that's not them. The people that, that, that genuinely wanna help you be better. You need to partner with someone so that you can, they can poke your ideas to make sure that they're awesome. And you take those and write it um, and you combine their feedback with yours and then you're gonna make some, you're gonna write something truly special. Great questions. When telling your story, where do you begin? Do you have several different stories for different situations? Yeah, so great question. I think, um, so for me, it all depends on what the topic is. And so um, I have this really nerdy part of storytelling uh, called, called what's the category. And so for me, I, you know, for Cilantro Diaries, that was a book written for, I really wrote it for my nephews because they were about to graduate high school. So I wanted to give them the book that was hey, here's all the advice I would have given myself. So the category is business lessons from someone just graduating. That's the category. 
So then I go, once I have my category, what are the best stories I can tell within that category so that my audience will get a lot of value? My, then my second book, The FOIA, was about fear and anxiety. And, and this, your question is really great because um, I had too many stories for that book. And so I had to ask myself, what are the questions that deal with fear and anxiety that will help my reader at the end of this book? And there's, a, there's a great stories about a lot of gangs getting into fights and crazy shootings. And, and, and a lot of them didn't make the book because they were cool stories. They were in the category, but they did not help my reader, which what I had, what I had chosen, which was fear and anxiety, dealing with fear and anxiety. And so if you're writing out there or if you're writing about a topic, what is the category? And you have to pick the stories that only point back to that big idea, which is why I put the big idea in the slide, right? And that idea is reinforced by the stories that you tell. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if it doesn't. All right, so we're kind of running out of time. So this will be the last question. Um, the question says, when you said you sell yourself and your ideas, is it really selling yourself or ideas and gaining profit? And how is it selling yourself if it is? Uh, that's a that's an awesome question. And I, I so I want to separate it from, it's not selling yourself for profit, even though you can do that. So I want to give you a great, uh, a great example. Um, and so one day you're going to be at, working at a job and hopefully it's a job that you like and there's going to be a job opening that opens up and you're going to say uh, I want that I want that promotion right and you're going to say these are all the reasons why I want that promotion and this is the story behind those reasons now that is a little bit more towards the profit because you're going to maybe you get a promotion right um, but the other, so that's selling yourself for something you want to do. Now let's talk about selling your ideas. And actually, this is probably both of these are applicable to where you are right now at Cast Tech. So let's say you go to your teacher and you say, I have this idea. Um, I want to implement this new cool thing at Cast that we're not doing now. And the teacher's going to go and they're going to lean back and they're going to say, Okay, give me your pitch. The way you sell your idea is through storytelling. You're gonna say, well, we should do this new, we should learn this new technology. And this is why we should use this new technology. And I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you an example. Um, I was once at the San Antonio Area Foundation and I was put on the spot and, and they said, Lorenzo, uh, there's a grant for a 3D printer that we're gonna put in the school. And they want you to sell the 3D printer and I wasn't prepared for this. So I looked at this committee and I said, well, right now the school that you're gonna, the school that's gonna buy this 3D printer doesn't know anything about technology. They think you have to be a, a, a genius, you know, advanced calculus programmer, um, but technology is for everybody. And so I told them, I said, they're gonna get this 3D printer and someone who's never used technology before is gonna go put a little line of code in and they're gonna take something like my wedding ring and they're going to put in some line of code and the 3D printer is going to print them out a plastic identical replica of my wedding ring. And when they see that that line of code gives them this, they're going to go, oh, I can do that too. And so I used the story to sell the idea of what that 3D printer was going to do. And so every one of you students, let's just say you're going to run for class president. Let's say you want more responsibility. You have to sell yourself. Why should the teacher choose you instead of the person behind you? You have to sell yourself through your storytelling. And the last thing you do is I need to sell my ideas, the things that I want to do, right? The new projects, the new programs, and all of that is done by effective storytelling. It's a great question.